three players could leave Man United in the January transfer window to either go out on loan or on a permanent deal. Who are these three players? Marcus Rashford, Anthony, and Casemiro. Who of those three would you let go in January and who should probably stay? This is a very, very interesting one. I'll speak about all three players and I'm going to end with Marcus Rashford, who is obviously always the most controversial topic at Man United. Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Let's get into this video. Just yesterday, a story broke that three clubs are interested in this particular player to bring him in in January already. But before we get to that player, let's speak about Anthony first. Now, Anthony, I've spoken about him too many times. Many people have spoken about him too many times. Has he flopped at Man United? Yes, he has. It's, it's a complete flop. We spent, what, 85 million pounds on him, 92 million euros to bring him in from Ajax. Eric Ten Hag wanted him. He was a massive prospect for the future and for now. Obviously, after he did that spin, people like Paul Scholes and Roy Keane were just absolutely angry at him and they never liked him ever since he did the spin. Did that spin make him lose his form? I don't think so. But I just think maybe the Premier League was too much for him. Um, I think there's many things you can blame. Some people blame the tactics. I wouldn't necessarily blame the tactics per se, but I would say that Anthony probably just isn't the guy that we thought he was going to be. And clearly, Eric Ten Hag has made a mistake here, which is normal. Managers make mistakes. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did it with Jaden Sancho. So this sort of thing happens. We do have, it's normal for managers to make mistakes when it comes to signings and transfers. And I think the thing that, because Eric Ten Hag obviously worked with him, at Ajax Amsterdam, he obviously saw something good, but then again, it's a different league, it was a different team of players, um, obviously Masrawi played with him as well, he never really got a chance, to, never gets a chance to play with Masrawi because we have other wingers that are doing much better ahead of him, but I think when it comes to Anthony, I personally would not let him go because we always need depth, we kind of can see that injury thing sneaking up on us again. It's giving us little warnings here and there. But I think what we have to be extremely cautious about and be concerned about is injuries that might possibly happen. And therefore, I actually wouldn't let Anthony go. I don't think that Anthony should leave uh, because we do need depth. We, knew, we do need somebody or at least two players coming off the bench if we run into an injury crisis again. So I wouldn't let Anthony go. You let me know your thoughts in the comments. Should Anthony go out on loan in January? There are clubs that are interested in bringing him in um, on a loan until the end of the season. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you enjoy the content, remember to hit that subscribe button. We speak every day about all things Man United. Come join the conversation. It's always a lot of fun. Casemiro. Now, Casemiro got a lot of praise for his performance on the weekend against Brentford. Um, he pretty much showed good signs in the second half, but once again, the midfield that we put out against Brentford was an absolutely slow midfield. And I actually said this in my match review. It seemed like Brentford got slower in the second half and we got quicker, which made no sense because our midfield is so slow. Ericsson and Casemiro, absolutely no legs. Casemiro has a great passing range, uh, which obviously Manuel Ugarte is, I'm assuming, still working on. He also had some good interceptions, some good tackles. But he really just is one or two yards to slow, in my personal opinion. Um, I know a ton of people still rate Casemiro highly. I also still do rate him, but I think he would do so much better in a league like Syria or the Turkish league or even a league like League Un, where the pace or the intensity is not as crazy as that of the, of the Bundesliga or La Liga or the Premier League. Uh, I think he still has a lot to offer. I think he's 32 years old now, which is not bad um, at all. He's obviously won everything. He's a legend um, at Real Madrid and with Brazil. But I think personally for where Man United are at, I would be looking to move him on, not in January. I know the reason that the club wants to move him on is because of money. He's on a huge wage, which is understandable. They want to try and maybe halve that in January, hence why they want to try and move him on. But realistically, do we have the depth to let him go at the moment? Our midfield roster is Manny Lugate, Casemiro, Christian Eriksen, Mason Mount, Bruno Fernandes, Collier, and Kobi Mainu. 
Uh, do we have the depth in that specific position? The only person we really have to come in in that CDM role is Ugarte. We know Kobe Mainu does not enjoy playing a CDM role and is more of a number eight. So I personally wouldn't let him go halfway through a season where we're still struggling, crawling through the season in 12th place. I'm glad we got a win. But at a time like this, I think we need all hands on deck. And he, again, is another player that I would not consider letting go especially in this January transfer window. But on Casemiro, let me know your thoughts. I know he's highly rated by quite a bit of people in our fan base. Um, a few pundits on the weekend spoke about him as well. Spoke about him actually having a very good game, especially in the second half. Like I said, I think the second half was a very weird half. We did come out with extreme intensity, but Brentford just looked slow. I don't know if they had a big lunch before that second half, but the, the pace difference from the first half to the second half was just very strange, but it worked to our favor, which was good. The last player, the most controversial one, the one that divides our fan base the most because he's so loved by many fans and then also not loved by some other fans, is Marcus Rashford. Now, Marcus Rashford has come under a lot of scrutiny and has been the topic for a very, very long time. But I'll start with what Jamie Carragher had to say about Marcus Rashford. He said that Marcus Rashford looked the best he's looked all season playing on the right. Now, I understand why Jamie Carragher said this. It was a, a, a short little stint on Sky analyzing the game afterwards. And it's because of that cross or that assist. Now, this is kind of the thing that I would speak about when it comes to Rashford before I say whether you should go or not. And you can let me know if you agree with this or not. Marcus Rashford playing on the right and any other winger on the left, Garnacho, Ahmad, Anthony, whoever, let's just for, for example's sake. What happens now is you actually have to have at least two defenders on Marcus Rashford and another one on Garnacho because Marcus Rashford is such a threat. And if you look at that Garnacho goal, it was a beautiful goal that he struck, but he was basically unmarked. Why is that? Because you'll notice whenever Marcus Rashford has the ball, there's a minimum of two players that are occupied with him because he's so quick. And because he's, <coughs> because he's so quick and because he always has a goal threat, players don't know what he's going to do. Now, Jamie Carragher, Carragher touched on this point. I'm, I'm not a fan of, of Carragher. I never have been because he obviously is a... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he never really speaks a lot of sense in my opinion. But anyway, he picked up something that I spoke about in my review as well, that Marcus Rashford looked better off the right because more defenders now had to be focused on two very, very attacking direct wingers. And I think this played to the advantage of Eric Ten Hag, who also took credit for it. I gave it credit initially because I thought the plan was to put Rashford on the right because he doesn't track back because of Brian and Burmo. Actually, I see what the idea was. The idea was to attack, attract attention away from Garnacho, which on so many occasions, Garnacho looked our most dangerous player because the focus was on Marcus Rashford. Now, is, he, is him being utilized like that the way forward for Man United? If that was a glimpse as to what we play like with Rashford on the right, I'm not opposed to it. But coming back to the purpose of this, of this actual video, Marseille, PSG are all in, are, are interested in bringing Marcus Rashford for the January transfer window. And another wild card team is Bayern Munich. Now, these th three teams, we obviously know PSG were interested last season. They were pretty much priced out of a deal. United were wanting nothing less than £75 million. And I don't think that has changed. Now, will Marcus Rashford go in January? He himself has called Eric Ten Hag a madman and said that he has lost the dressing room. But would I personally let Marcus Rashford go? In my humble opinion right now where I'm sitting, considering what I've seen for the last season and a half or so, I do think Marcus Rashford needs a break from Manchester United. Um, I just think it has been too up and down. It's been a roller coaster ride for too for too long, and I do think that he would be better suited at a different club that might employ different tactics, that might do a different style of play, that might suit him. But that's my honest opinion. 
You let me know yours in the comments. Like I said, a lot of people, including myself, were impressed with Rashford. I was impressed with him, um, to be honest, when he, on that starting on the right-hand side, he did influence the game. And obviously, he put in that beautiful cross for Garnacho. But that happened because the defense was so focused on him. Garnacho was free so many times in that game. But let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.